Today, we're going to talk about CMOS and how it relates to good lighting. Or the other way around, what kind of lighting you need for a CMOS. The CMOS operates in a different way than the CCD. It captures every pixel at a time, and then that information is read out. Basically, it operates exactly like a memory card, where you can read every bit. So it has some advantages and disadvantages to do it this way. We remember in the CCDs, we had this problem with the vertical smear. When there was a very bright object, you would get this vertical line. Some people don't like that or find it to be a defect. The CMOS is free of this, so it can take very bright objects without any distortion. On the other hand, uh, the, the, it requires circuits to be on the front of the imager. Therefore, the real estate we have available for the pixel, which is the device that picks up the light, is smaller than on a CCD. As the nature of the CMOS, sensitivity is worse on a CMOS than it is on a CCD. Although there have been some advances in technology, Sony is manufacturing a new imager called a backlit CMOS where the electronics to drive the pixel are now behind in a second layer, not in the front layer like traditionally it has been with the CMOS. This picture explains exactly what has changed. And it provides about a one f-stop advantage. Here we see a backlit CMOS compared to a standard CMOS and a 30 lux picture. So the pros and cons of CMOS are, the pros are it is addressable in a flat field, easy to change frame rates. It can do windowing. There's no vertical smear. You need only a single power supply with low power consumption and low heat dissipation. So you can run it with a lower, with a smaller battery. It's a low sensitivity device. The signal to noise ratio ink is not as good as on a CCD. Sometimes it has fixed pattern. And the worst of all is the rolling shutter. And this is standard even in the new generation of CMOS. The rolling shutter is because we're now capturing from top to bottom if within a 60th of a second, which is what it takes to, to scan or to capture from top to bottom, the object changes. Let's say something moves horizontally very fast, then the top and bottom will not be a straight line. It may be a little twist. This is called rolling shutter. So if you're shooting a race car and your camera is standing still and there are some logos on the side of that car, when you look at the still of that picture, you will see the logo being distorted because the image on the top of the CMOS was different than at the bottom as timing progresses. When you use fluorescent lighting, which we mentioned before, it turns on at a very bright, high color temperature and it turns off at the end of that 1 60th of a second at low color temperature and low intensity. You may end up with a situation like this if the shutter is set very high and it's also in a CMOS where you will have the upper portion or lower portion or mid portion of the picture being brighter than the others. In terms of the gas discharge lighting, which is, as I said, fluorescent or others like uh, mercury lights and so on, even the new LED lights, you will have this problem. So when you are using a gas discharge like a fluorescent, make sure that your camera is not set to go into shutter mode, even with CMOS. So I think we have covered enough of CCD and CMOS in these last two sessions to understand that both devices do work well. There's a new generation of CMOS coming and eventually everything will move to CMOS, but both have different considerations in terms of lighting. One because of the global shutter for the CCD and the rolling shutter for the CMOS. I'll see you in session five.